Doll Hust of All! I was at JCPenney the other day because I'm working on an upcoming video where I hunt around in my area at different department stores to see what the oldest fashionista I can find in store for retail prices. Here's a tip for you all. If you're looking for any of these older fashionistas, stores like Kohl's and Macy's and JCPenney, a lot of their stock is old because they are a lot more expensive than Walmart or Target was so they can't sell through their stuff as quickly. But one thing that I forgot that retail chains do is price match. So I immediately headed to the toy section of the store, like an adult male in his early 20s does, to see what sort of Barbies they had in stock. And whenever I saw this guy there, I thought to myself, he looks an awful lot like my good friend Stovall the doll on Instagram. He's got the same cheekbones, he's got the same jawline, his eye color's the same, his hairstyle's the same. It's so strange, he looks exactly like Soval, except for his outfit. Soval would never wear anything without pockets. I wonder if Mattel even asked him for permission to use his likeness on this doll. Actually, you know what, let me text him real quick so I can find out. Well, I smell another lawsuit coming on. Mattel just can't stay out of the courtroom, can they? Well, regardless, I'm happy to have my own copy of Stovall, even if it isn't as good as a real thing. So, let's take a look at Barbie Fashionista number 131. So here he is displayed in his packaging. I don't open up enough cans on this channel, but that's only because Mattel doesn't release as much of him as they do Barbie. Whenever they were doing the fashionistas back then, only select ones had their own unique illustration. So he was one of the ones that was lucky enough to get his own. And here's a look at some of the fashionistas that were available at the time. You see, this wave is three years old as it was released in 2018. I have basically all the ones that I want from this line. I'm unboxing him today. I have them. I have two copies of them because I love them so much. And I have her. She was the very first one to use the dimples face sculpt. So of course I had to get her. Um, didn't ever get her. Didn't want her because of she's just another Millie. And didn't get her either because she was another Millie. I didn't get this one either. They were the first ones who have the athletic body type. Um, I don't know. I just, there wasn't really much about them that caught my eye. Um, I didn't get this one. This is the first one to have a prosthetic leg, but I just didn't like her face sculpt. I really, really wish I would have got her, but I just couldn't ever find a good one in the store. Like this face sculpt, like the Alec face sculpt is really prone to wonk eye. And now that we have to deal with Pixel Face 2, I really regret not getting her because I love her dark lipstick and I love her braids and I liked her graphic tee. Didn't care much for the skirt, but I love the lavender boots, so. Oh well. Didn't get her, didn't get him. I got her just for the shirt. I didn't get him yet, but I did get these two. And I really, really, really love this one. So, I have basically all the ones that I wanted from this wave. I'm so used to the zipper packaging at this point, so it's really weird to be opening one with a blister pack. Wow, he's got no ties holding him down. So here's a look at the official Stovall the Doll doll. Since Mattel doesn't want to give their newer face sculpts proper names, I think that we should petition to have this one officially called Stovall. This head mold is dated 2018, and that means it was brand spanking new whenever this wave of fashionistas came out. So he was a very, very first doll use this face sculpt. I wanted to get him whenever he was new at Walmart, but somebody in my area was buying up all the ones that were available in my area. I wonder who that was. I'm just kidding. I didn't pick him up because at the time I wasn't making as much money as I am now, and I had to be a lot more picky about which dolls I bought for myself. This face just wonka. The eyes were all over the place. But it's a really handsome face sculpt. I love his pouty lips. I love his nose shape. I love his like 
faded eyebrows. I like how thick they are. I like his like swept back hair. I like the fade. I wish they took this head sculpt because 3D technology, I know it's possible, and make like different hair versions of it, like with a quaff or like with a faux hawk or something. I think he'd look really nice with a beard. Mattel has yet to give us a male fashionista with facial hair, and I think that's a real shame because for one, facial hair can add a lot of variety because you could have a mustache, you could have a full beard, you could have just like, um, like you know how some men have just the beard around the bottom part of their face and not a mustache. I don't know what that's called. You could have a goatee. Um, it could add a lot more variation in the male fashionistas and it would just be a little bit more pain on the face. And for me personally, I'm just really attracted to men that have facial hair. That's why I have a beard myself. As for his outfit, he has this short sleeve hoodie that Velcro's in the back. It's yellow with uh, New York written on the front of it. Well, it's like a printed decal. Um, it's a really cool piece and, and the hood fits over his head really nice. It looks really cute on him. Um, I'll probably redress him, but I really, really like the hoodie. I like how it actually has a cuff around the bottom, and I really like his shorts too. Gray is my favorite color. I mean, this outfit is just really, really balanced to me. Like, he's mostly neutral, but he's just got this bright pop of yellow for his hoodie. I mean, this, this looks a lot nicer than anything that the Kens from the newest wave are wearing. These shorts are a really soft material. They're hemmed at the bottom. It's all nice. The shoes are just, you know, regular, like, white Ken high tops. Like, of course, I wish that there was some sort of, like, paint detail on there. I mean, I could do that myself if I really wanted to. I shouldn't have to. You know, they're really versatile. They could go with a lot. And because this video would be really short otherwise, I have a couple more things that I want to include. The first one being this fashionista, number 164, who uses the Stovall head sculpt as well. So I thought it would be appropriate to unbox him alongside the original Stovall. So here's a look at Barbie fashionista number 164 in his packaging. You can see his unique illustration on the bottom. And for some reason, Mattel isn't putting the quotes on the bottom of the Ken dolls like they are with Barbie. Not sure why that is. You can see the original Stovall has his teeth showing, while this one sort of has like a closed mouth smile. I think that this mold was really meant to have his teeth showing. As you can see, from the side, there's a very obvious gap between his upper and lower lip where the teeth should go. So it just it just looks kind of weird to me for the teeth not to be there. And they do the same thing with the June head sculpt where they try to give her a closed mouth smile when she's very obviously supposed to have teeth. It just makes his lips look a lot fuller than on the original Stovall. You can see this one's hair is a lot lighter and he doesn't have as much of a fade as the original one does. Instead of it fading from shorter to longer, it's more of like an even cut. His head moves a lot better too. I'm not sure what that's about. And his skin tone is slightly lighter as well. He's also on the broad body, just like the original Stovall was. And his outfit is, oh God, these colors. Uh... I'm, I'm not feeling this. Uh, so he's got this like basketball shirt that's like purple with stars on it. it says Malibu 61. I'm surprised that Stovall's shirt didn't say Malibu or something. Cause you know Barbie lives in Malibu. That's why everything Barbie says Malibu, Malibu, Malibu. But I guess Stovall's from New York. That's weird. I thought he was from Tennessee. And his pants are these uh, like blue star pants. It's like a blue color with lighter blue stars. They also Velcro. No, they don't actually. They they're stretchy. And he's got these like they're not like high tops like Stovalls are. They're just more like ankle shoes. I definitely prefer the original Stovall better 
but I'm glad that they're trying something different with this head sculpt because some head sculpts I feel like they use once for like one doll and then forget about it and never use it again. Like the head sculpt for the hip hoodie Ken, they only used it on that one doll and it's such a handsome head sculpt. I really wish that they would use that one again because he is so hard to get a hold of now. Now what doll collector doesn't love miniatures? I found the second series of Wacky Packages Minis by Super Impulse at Target the other day, and I bought five of them to open alongside the Sorol doll because I know how much he loves these. And we will take a look at the second wave of Wacky Packages by Super Impulse after these messages. Who's that Pokemon? own your own my plastic waste of space to clutter up your own home each pony has their own distinctive personality all using the same base mold to save our production costs of course brilliantly handcrafted by our specialty team of underage sweatshop workers overseas but your pampered materialistic american hands don't have to worry about that this is Nailator. can i see my family now you promised now now ching chong you don't want to go back in your box do you <laughs> crunchy i'm fizzy fairy floss i'm glittery red crumb i'm flopped I'll kill you. Uh, I'm metallic. And be on the lookout for this rare chase variant, White Noise. I like glow in the dark. My plastic waste of space. My plastic waste of space. Ah. Collect them all, each sold separately. Available wherever 1980s toy line parodies are sold. It's Pikachu! Pikachu! These work really well as doll props. Some of them are more in scale with Barbie than others are. I actually prefer the Wacky Packages to the Five Surprise Mini Brands by Zuru, just because I kind of have a little bit of beef with Zuru. I emailed them back in April of 2019, begging them to include a miniature bag of Fuego Takis in their second series of mini brands. And they were like, ooh, I love Takis. I'll definitely get that over to the team. And then the second wave came out and it didn't happen. So boycotting mini brands. I'm just kidding. I'm not holding it against them. I'm not really sure how hard it would have been for them to get the Takis license. I just really wanted a mini bag of Takis, man. I also really enjoy the crude humor of these. It definitely reminds me of like in a cartoon whenever you see like a brand in the background that's meant to be a parody of something in real life. That's kind of how I look at it. Like in my doll world, Kit Kats might actually be called Zip Cats. I don't know anybody who would buy Zip Cats, but I made sure to pick out the ones that I really like the miniature on the top of the packaging. I like that you can at least see one of what you're getting so that I at least know that I'm getting one that I like. That first one is a parody of the Chips Ahoy cookies called Chimps Ahoy. Chimps Ahoy. Cookies for chimpanzees. This one's more cute than crude. It's a big pack of cookies. Here's where the crude stuff begins. This is a parody of Push Pop, and it is Puss Pop. Ugh. This is a parody of Fudge Sickle. It's called S Sludge Pops. Mmm, don't those look delicious? This one is a parody of the Nintendo Game Boy. It's called Lame Boy. I really, really like this one, and another one of the packages that I got actually has the Lame Boy on top of it. So I really wanted this one. I don't hate having a duplicate because it looks really cool. This one is a jar of. I'm not even really sure what it's supposed to be parroting, but it's called Evil Time. Chocolate flavor, evil time. It makes you spellbound. Turns milk into witch's brew. Ooh, that's awesome. This is gonna be a cool prop for Halloween. Oh my God, it's Cheetos. Oh shit, no, it's Cheetos. We got Chester Cheetah digging through the trash. Now these aren't like a, uh, like actual bag material like the mini brands are. It's just like a piece of plastic with a sticker on it. But that's how most Barbie accessories are anyway. So 
I don't really care. And look how good that size is. The next one starts off with a sticker of Peter Pan Handle Extra Lungy Peanut Clutter Spread. Obviously meant to be a parody of the Peter Pan peanut butter. If you all have not tried the honey roasted crunchy Peter Pan peanut butter, I definitely recommend it. No nothing but a bunch of old rubber bowling shoe soles. Huh. I mean, this is supposed to be the Nutter Butters, right? I haven't had one of those in a long time. And then I have a can of Hertz Tasty Tomatoes. And here is a box of Macaroni for Geese. The queasiest. The company name is Cramp. Yeah, that's what happens whenever you eat too much cheese. And this one isn't a food item. It's supposed to be a parody of Advil. It's called Anvil. 500 pounds of iron. Doesn't feel like it's got 500 pounds of iron in it. The next one starts off with a duplicate of macaroni and geese, and the sticker is a parody of Gatorade called Gutterade. Ugh, there's an eyeball floating around in there. That's nasty. Lemon slime. And then it's got a parody of Windex called Wind Hex Glass Cleaner. Makes your window look real spooky. I like this one. I like the Halloween themed ones. And this is the first one I've got with this sort of a bottle mold. And here we have a parody of goldfish crackers called Coldfish. Dead fish crackers. Mm. Well, people eat dead fish all the time, so I don't see why this would be weird. And here is a duplicate of Shredge Sickle. And this is a can of Owl Poo. Leftover dinner for dumb dogs. Aw, don't call them dumb. I have another doll friend that's really into The Sims, and this reminded me of him. It's a parody of the game by Entertainment Arts called Sims. Instead, it's called Dims, the Celebrity Moron Simulator. I think I see Michael Jackson and Donald Trump on there. This is really cool. I like all the detail that they put on the sides. It even has like a mini like barcode on the bottom. Oh, jeez. Now we have a bag of free toes. Free toes in every package of corn chips. Free toes. Ugh. Here's another non-food item. It is a bottle of toothpaste called Aqua Flush. Here's another Halloween-themed one. This one is called Fright Castle Ghoul Burgers. I really like White Castle. I haven't been there in a long time, but the last time I went, which was like three years ago, they had mini veggie burgers, so I really appreciate that they had a vegetarian option before it got popularized with Beyond Meat. This one is awesome. I love this one. It's a it's a parody of the um, Wonder Bread, but instead of Wonder Bread, it's called Blunder Extra Heavy Bread. Build your body just by lifting package. So I guess it's supposed to be like a Heavy. I definitely like the shape and the sculpted detail on here. The next package starts off with a parody of Cheerios. Instead of Cheerios, it's called Cheapios. Lots of holes in every package. Try it with strawberries or you'll still be hungry. Fortified with iron, so kiss your teeth goodbye. Here is the last sticker. This is a another parody of Cheerios, but instead of Cheapios is called Gearios, and you can see there's a bunch of gears in there, and there is a man willingly eating the bowl of gears and fucking up his teeth in the process. I love this one. This is a parody of the Trix cereal, but instead of Trix, it's Hicks. And you can see there's a bunch of Hicks in the bowl instead of the cereal. This is a really cool prop. I love the cereal ones. And here is a box of snots. Instead of the dots candy, it is snots. So it's just a bunch of boogers. Nasty. And here is a parody of fruit gushers. Instead, it is foot gushers. So it's got a guy with a bunch of like, pimples on his foot, and they're like gushing out gummy worms. Ugh, nasty. Cochina. And then our last wacky package is a box of chicken fat. Laundry detergent. For lovelier stains. Some of these parodies are a little bit 
dated. So some of the brands that they are parroting have been discontinued. So I don't really know what this is parroting and I don't really know if it's still around. Here's a look at the checklist. As you can see, it has it separated by old school parodies and new school parodies. So some of these are meant to be more classic than other ones. It looks like the Evil Time and the Alpu are the rarest ones that I opened today. I really want that box of Unlucky Charms. Oh, and I really, really want the box of Frosted Snakes and the Slacker Jacks and the Claude-like. Oh my god, I love Klondike bars. <gasps> they got a copy of Grand Theft Auto Vice City or Grand Theft Audio Vice City. Grand Theft Auto Vice City was one of my favorite video games growing up. And it's probably part of the reason why I'm so bad at driving, and it's probably why I'm so fucked up in the head that I played Grand Theft Auto at such a young age, but... Man, I'm gonna have to make another trip to Target. There is a lot of these that I still want to get. I also really want these, uh, animal crackers because I loved animal crackers as a kid. I mean, they're just really little plastic boxes with stickers over them, but... They, like I said, they make really good doll props, so I feel like we're probably going to be the people to be buying most of these. It's really hard for me to pick a favorite. I really like the Chimps Ahoy, and I also really like the Cheapos, but I also really like the cereal boxes, so... What was y'all's favorite that we opened today? I know that Stavall usually uses the BMR 1959 with the green hair as a body donor for the original Stavall. You see, he has slightly more tan skin than the newer one. I have my spare green hair Ken right here, and he does look like he's a pretty good match for the original Stavall. The new one is probably going to be a better match for the wheelchair Ken because he has a slightly lighter skin tone than the BMR 1959. I hope that you all enjoyed my review of Barbie Fashionista number 131 and number 164. Stilwell has a million more followers than I do, and he doesn't really need me to promote him, but if you haven't already, I would definitely go follow him on Instagram because he posts a lot of really good doll content on his page, and he puts a lot of hard work into his sets and dioramas and all of his props that he makes for his dolls, so I feel like he really brings his world to life. As always, thank you all so, so much for watching my video and supporting my channel. If you haven't already, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy my content, and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you so much.